Mr. Whitlock to describe the project. I will. Okay. Mr. Whitlock, can you hear me properly? Can you hear me? I can. I can hear you. Okay, at this time, uh, we're going to ask uh, for anyone speaking for the uh, proposal for the annexation. So I'll turn it over to you. If you will, identify yourself, state your name, and your address for the record, and uh, what involvement you have with the project, sir. Sure. Again, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure. My name is Craig Whitlock, for the record. I live in Houston, Texas, 3011, Craig Cardinal Lane. And I operate as the CEO of the Noble Biomass Group. In short, it's RBG. And I don't want to take up the entire 10 or 15 minutes that's allocated, but I believe that there are some concerns. I look forward to hopefully clearing some of those up, entertaining any other points that may be made at the back end, but it's a pleasure to be a part of this time. I'm going to start off with five simple points. The first is the wood biomass being a potentially unclean and non renewable source. Well, if the wood fiber, the source, is responsibly managed, which it is in Adele, it is a clean and renewable source. More critically, external audits will be conducted several times throughout the course of construction and also before commencement of the actual production and then through ramp up. Those external audits will render certifications. And those certifications will be based on the highest international standards. So corporate social responsibility is the key for us here at RPG. That's the first point. Second, the use of only scraps and waste. So I, I, I want to make this point a little bit more clear. Uh, we call these code products uh, sawmill residuals. At best, a tree that is felled for timber only utilizes as the most efficient operation 60% of that tree due to knots and, and curves and twists in the actual um, trunk of that tree as well as the, the general amount of bark that's on the surface of the tree. So we take those sawmill residuals as well as sustainable forest wood rock. That is, which, that is the source of the feedstock that we use to make up our finished product which is used for industrial purposes in Europe and in Asia. So to make it even more clear, there is no clear cutting of force. Georgia has had a, a significant and a strong record of maintaining their force levels at a high level. Um, the third point is about the pellet plant and job creation. And I'm going to touch on something a little bit more anecdotally at the back end, but let me just say this in the front. We're going to look at hiring no less than 64 personnel directly and that's upon commencement of the facility through ramp up we'll get up to roughly 70 personnel as we get to our commercial production level and that's direct hiring we'll see a handful of indirect jobs being secured or either uh, new jobs created in support of the services that we require for example like transportation or other logistical needs and this dovetails into the simple hours of operation. We're not looking at an eight hour operational day. We're going to be having 24-7 um, operations to some level um, because it's responsible for us to, to manage equipment that's either shutting down or starting back up or uh, moving products from one side of the facility to the other. So keeping that clear job creation is critical to us and we're going to be hiring people from uh, the ADL area. The fourth point are the health concerns. And I, I think that uh, was it Pastor Morris that was originally coming up and maybe you want to touch on some of this. Um, we're going to process sustainable wood fiber on site, conforming to all required state and federal regulations, especially in terms of the emissions, while adhering to OSHA, as we have the leading occupational health and safety system place already. So as we onboard employees, they'll be trained up in all of these matters so they understand the most safe practices and that an accident is not really an accident at all. We look forward to helping to build that up. The fifth point is where I go to a little bit more of an anecdotal or a narrative approach 
on community support is one of the points that was made. Um, I, I can't say it enough, but we received a significant amount of interest from the Southeast. We zeroed it in over the past five years in, in Georgia, and over the past four, the, or three and a half to four years in A. Delco County. We find that to be our home, our headquarters. We do have the expectation to grow and mature there in a responsible way. Employment is one of the key means of supporting the, supporting the community. And I have to admit, there's no perfect solution. I understand that. There's not even a perfect renewable solution between wind or solar or hydroelectric or wood pellets. Wood pellets is, is a means to help reduce greenhouse gases, and carbon emissions, and carbon footprint decreases. <coughs> So there's no perfect solution in any one of those. Everyone has an issue. But a little bit more personally, here I am. I just arrived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yes, my home of record is Houston. I spent 13 years in the military, seven of those years out of Fort Bank, Georgia. And I saw something when I was living here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or a suburb of here. I know that many of you are aware that aside from Pittsburgh Steelers, I won't go into that, but many of you are aware of the steel industry that was here through the 1980s. My father was employed up until 1980, laid off after 23 years of work. He fought as a carpenter and a painter for three years to get employment and make ends meet, which he did by God's grace. Um, but I watched a man go from having enough income to be middle, in, middle of the road, middle income earner, to being just lower middle class. And the toll that that took on him psychologically, but he fared off, he fared back. Others in that community where he went down to work suffered. I've watched retail shops go into disrepair. They were shuttered. Uh, the actual steel mills became just relics, if you will. And I've watched people not only go from employment to unemployment, but I've watched them have to struggle to figure out how they're going to make the simple day to day activities that come to the meeting. In other words, food provision, keeping on the water, keeping on the power, because there was a divestment of investment versus investing in that area. So from firsthand experience, community support starts by investing in the area. So what can be done is invest versus divest. What can be done is employ versus provide people pay slips. And what also can be done is see families grow and flourish versus watch them come to some level of disrepair because people are not investing. Adel is the right community. It's strong. It's under this strong and solid leadership. We just look forward to participating in any way, shape, or form. But the principal form is going to be with the establishment of the Renewable Biomass Group. So I hope that I've maybe touched on some of the, the points that have been made. Um, I'll leave it there for mm -hmm. someone else to follow up that wants to speak for something. I guess. So back to you, Mayor and John Fly. Thank you. Thank you, sir.